Okay, well, good evening. I will try not to take any more of your time. Uh, like Miss Ball said, uh, I apologize for having you out the, the night after open house night. Um, again, it was not intentional. It will not be something that we make a habit of. So, um, so Friday nights are, are typically my, my family night. So um, I, I, I want to be very clear about that. So several things to get through tonight. Um, I do want to cover kind of our overall parent meeting first. That's going to cover everything for all grade levels that's relevant to all grade levels. And then we'll switch to, um, I'll, I'll let 7th and 8th grade parents go ahead and head out. And then we'll switch to 6th grade after that. Let's see, normally I'll wear this with a tie, so it's creeping up on me just a little bit more than normal. But, um, but just to provide a little bit of a vision and, and to let you understand who I am is kind of the intention of tonight. So uh, my name is Josh Underwood. I've been teaching in the county for, um, this will be my eighth year here um, in, the, in the school district. I've been teaching middle school band for eight years. And I was figuring out this morning, um, I was figuring out one of my classes, I've been playing trombone for 20 years. So I've been engaged in band programs for 20 years, um, and I, I love doing it. I absolutely love making music. I love producing music. I love performing music. I love teaching others music. And so I'm, I'm very excited to do that here at Kirkwood. So this is the community that I, I go to church in. This is the community um, that I live very close to. And so it's a community that I want to engage in and teach in a good bit. So um, I do want to help you understand me as a parent as well. I am a, a band parent this year for the first time. I have a student, so I guess I could, yeah, I'm also on the receiving end of this band parent meeting right now. Um, I have a sixth grader that's starting band here at Kirkwood Middle School this year. So I have a kindergartner that's starting at Rossview Elementary this year, a three month old that's, um, that's in daycare right now, well, not at this moment, but um, for the school year. My wife is teaching at Rossview High School and my foster son graduated Northeast last year. So um, we got a, got a big family and, and lots of moving pieces as well here. So a um, couple things to talk about. One, very pleased. Overall, right now we do have um, a close to 17% of the student body in band. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, the, the general healthy number is about 10%. And so we're, we're about at 17 right now. That's starting out, and our eighth grade numbers are especially low just because you can't really recruit for eighth grade. Um, it's something that you already have to have two years really in band to, to be in, and so it's something you can't recruit for. So, so those are good starting numbers. But again, just some of the things that I wanted to, to make sure that you understood, that you knew about me and my vision for the band program. So we're gonna focus on teaching music through its performance. And, and a lot of this will be going through some of the band handbook tonight as well, which one of the things I wanted to show, and I hope I tried to leave the lights off back there so you can hopefully see the screen is not hooked up to actually pull down yet. So, so if you are on the Kirkwood Middle site, I did want to kind of walk you through this as well, just in case you're not familiar with navigating it, you can pull up the staff directory. Let's see if it will, it will cooperate for me. You scroll down to, to Underwood, view profile, and then on the profile is the band website. That's where most information will be housed, including the band handbook, which we'll be largely going through tonight in, in great detail, but just kind of making sure everybody is on the same page moving forward. So, again, um, is where we are. So again, we're trying to develop um, skills in performing on instruments so that students can continue on. We want to feed um, Kirkwood High School, the band program that's going to be starting over there next year. I've already been talking to the, the high school principal with just some of the pieces and parts that they need to start getting in place to make sure that they're going to have a successful high school band program experience when they get over there. Um, we want students to, to ultimately be able to play music in the community. Um, and we'll be looking for different opportunities to play in the community coming up. Uh, we're working on music theory, music history. Um, again, trying to find an activity that students can do that is worthy of their time. I know that you know as parents that, that screen time is a dangerous thing and finding ways to have our students engage in things that are, that are more life-giving than they are life-taking. So is an important part of band. Um, we want to make sure that, that students are, are developing a sense of camaraderie with their peers instead of isolation from their peers. Um, and we want ultimately students to um, grow as leaders. 
We want students, and we'll try to foster this through different student leadership aspects of band, having section leaders and different things like that. Um, we want students to be leaders and to be able to lead their peers as well. So one thing, um, just as far, and I'm not going to read everything to you because I know that's, that would be a waste of everyone's time, but just some high points. Um, you'll see at the bottom here that it says it has my name, yes, and it has Emily Tubbs. So Emily Tubbs is, is one of our music teachers here, and she is, she is functioning as our assistant band director. So that is new. That is something that has not happened in our school district um, as far as having an assistant band director on the middle school level, which she is a, a professional flute player. And so um, that, that is exciting because that's probably my, my weakest personal area. And so, um, so having that to supplement will be a very good thing. So um, a couple things to go through here. So one of the things that I want to make sure that band students are, are really starting to understand and get is that, and I explained this in class on the first day, which is that the band students should be the best students. They should be the most well-behaved students that I have higher expectations for them than I do any of the other students in the building. But that being said, that we have the school operating principles that, that are very important. And, and here's one of the biggest things out of our operating principles I just wanna to emphasize tonight, because again, I know that the students have talked about them over and over again, but that's, that's a growth mindset. And I would say that if there's ever a time that your student gets to a point where they say, I have completely mastered my instrument, I am done, there is nowhere I can improve upon it, they probably need to quit band at that point. Because I would say the same thing about myself, that I probably need to quit teaching at that point. Okay, if I, if I believe that I've mastered my craft so much that I cannot improve, then, then I don't need to be doing this anymore because that I've, I've lost that growth mindset. So that's very important to growing as a musician. Um, some of the expectations that we have in class, just continuing to move forward, is, um, is one, clean up after yourself. Right. That's, that's something that right now we're still short on custodians um, and that we probably will be for some time. So, so that's not something that every single inch of the building can get covered in the same way. And so we need to make sure students are cleaning up after themselves. Um, I know this is very important for you because as, as people, as parents who have made investments in instruments and are making investments in instruments, we want students to not touch anybody else's stuff. So I want to be very clear that the expectation is high that students are not engaging with anybody else's equipment. I know sometimes they like to switch instruments and, and try to play one another's, but I, I strongly discourage that. And it's one of my expectations so strongly that it's one of my handbook expectations that we not do that. Um, attitude is very important. Again, just hitting high points right now. Um, with multiple schools merging together, attitude is everything for this year because we could come in with with conflicting attitudes, we could come in with um, contradictory attitudes, and, and that would that would really ruin the year. And so, so so far, I have not seen that, and I'm very happy. I set my expectation first day that that would that would not be how we're going to roll this year, and I think that they have been rising to that occasion. So, um, so again, I, I expect strong behavior, strong academics from my band students. Um, I expect them to be responsible. And, um, and I was thinking about this the other day as far as having respect. I was thinking of, I, I commonly hear people say that, you know, I'll give, I'll give you respect if you give me respect. That's not really how life works, is it? If I, if I use that as my principle for engaging with parents, I would have been fired by now, right? That's not, how it, that's not how it works. You don't get a rude email and then you respond back however you want to. You respond back respectfully regardless. So, um, so again, I, I encourage my students to have respect for, for anyone that is in their, in their setting, in their classroom. And then, um, and then one more thing, it is important that um, I, I'm trying to change and to really start a, a culture within this band program. I always have things that I'm trying to grow on and things that I'm trying to change in my teaching. And the one this year that I'm starting to focus on is growing a culture. So how do we grow a student, a group of students that's different? Right? How do we grow a group of students that, that, says, that says thank you on a consistent basis? Not just in the band room, but, but we go to the cafeteria and we say thank you. We, we talk to our other teachers, we say thank you. And, and we're just appreciative of the people around us. That's, that's one of the things we're working on this year. Um, one thing that's, that's very important in band is that students understand that, that they do have to be disciplined. Um, and I mean that they have to be disciplined as in not just they have to have, have punishments or anything like that, but, but they have to actually discipline themselves as far as they have to be self-disciplined. They have to make sure that 
they're willing to practice, that they're willing to, to work hard, but, but also that, that students have to understand that, that I do have some of the largest class sizes, especially in sixth grade this year, um, in, in the school building for a single teacher. That's a great thing. That's exactly what band directors want. But that being said, we can't have students going kind to of run around doing whatever they want. So we do have pretty strict procedures. We do have, have timers. We do have expectations for when students are in their seats and when they're out of their seats and, and everything about that. So, so that is very important. And I'll go one more page and then I'll, I'll give a slight um, pause for just a second. So again, we have some, some classroom procedures that are important, but that's more for the classroom and not necessarily relevant for all parents. Um, one thing that I do want parents to be aware of, though, is lockers. I know this is very, very nuts and bolts, but um, but every student will be assigned an individual locker, and so um, and each one of those lockers has its own school lock, and so each one of those locks has an individual combination that will be given to only that student, and then it's keyed on the back with a master key that I have, so I can help students get into them if they're having trouble and those kind of things. But the important thing is that students keep up with their combination block. So I, I've let a couple of them go home to get practiced on for students that were having some trouble with them, but, uh, but it is very important that they keep up with them and that they actually use them. Okay, I had, um, I bought a set at my last school and, and probably a quarter of them were missing over the course of a couple years. That, and that really can't happen here. I expect them to be on lockers every single day and I'll go back behind the students sometimes closing them and making sure because what they'll do is they all look identical except for the serial numbers on the back if you look at them. And so students will take them off and put them on other lockers and lock them up. And it gets real confusing real fast when students are trying to enter their combination into a different lock. So again, I just, I just encourage you to encourage your students to make sure that they're, they're keeping up with their locker, they're keeping it locked at all times and they're not at their locker um, because that, that will cause a lot of confusion. Now, I do think, I do think she left, so I was gonna tell you what I really thought about Ms. Boss for a second. Um, so so Ms. Boss, um, I've had the, the privilege of working for her for the past six years. So she didn't hire me originally, but I did have the privilege of working for her for the past six years. And I am so excited to continue working for her this year, but I'm very excited to see her vision for Kirkwood Middle School. Um, I, th I think all teachers or all principals that I should say are idealistic in some way, but there are very few that get the opportunity to really um, put their, their uh, vision into practice. And so I'm very excited. Um, I've seen her heart over the last six years and um, I'm very excited to see what she's going to do here at Kirkwood Middle School, and I think you're very fortunate. Um, I, I moved my whole family. We were all gonna be in the, around the Northeast Complex, but, but I moved them down here because I believed in her vision for this school, and I, I truly believe you should too. So, going on, I missed a couple pages, but uh, just in case, in case you're looking for it throughout the year, um, I will make reference to um, uh, instrument care, and making sure that if you um, if you have an instrument malfunction or something breaks, one, 90% of those I can probably fix um, because a lot of them are very minor. They just, the students seem to bring them to me first and then I can tell you if they need to go to a, to a repair technician. But when I do tell you they need to go to a repair technician, I'll say just make sure you check the band handbook. And so it will be, it will be right there in the, in the handbook. So make sure, make sure you're checking that out. I will give a comment about AMRO and Music Central and, and that conversation, especially for seventh and eighth grade parents in just a minute. Um, we, do have, we do have grading in band, so band is a graded class. We'll have class checks that will be playing testing class, rehearsal etiquette expectations, um, because I do want, one of the things I want students to be able to do is to be able to rehearse effectively and efficiently and professionally. And so you know, do I expect them to act exactly like professionals in a symphony orchestra? Absolutely not. But do I expect them to act like well-behaved middle schoolers in a middle school band program? Absolutely. So I do have some expectations there listed there. Um, one of the ones relevant to parents for sure is that if they do have an instrument that's being repaired, just send me a note um, so I know, so I know where their instrument is and that they just didn't leave it at home. We'll have playing tests and written tests, but most importantly, since this is a performance-based class, we have concerts. We have concerts and one other required performance, which is solo and ensemble. Um, 
So we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but the, but the concerts are our two major events. We'll have one in the winter season and then one in the spring season. Both of those dates are on the band website already. So if you want to go ahead and put those on your calendar, they're both at six o'clock, um, I believe both on Tuesdays. Um, this will probably be the only Friday event I ever have. So um, I will try to avoid Fridays at all costs from here on out. But, um, but again, um, the concerts will be great. Um, they are they are required, and I, I stick pretty pretty fast to that because since our class leads completely to our concerts and we're gearing towards our concerts, that's that's the most important part. That's the time where students um, where students really get the most out of the band. I've, unfortunately, I've had students that you know their parents will contact me sometimes months in advance and say, "Well, my kid's not going to be able to be at the concert," and then come January they end up dropping out of the band. That's, that's sad to me because they missed the most exciting part. They missed all the payoff for all the work that they did and all they saw was the work and not the, the joy of getting to perform for their families. And so I just wanna make sure that, um, that those, are, those are treated seriously and that those are um, put on your calendars very early. Um, as far as performance expectations, we do have a required, I keep remember to scroll down. Um, we do have a required concert attire. Okay, if you are um, a Rossview parent, it should be the same. It's all black. Um, but it's outlined very clearly in the in the band handbook, so you have plenty of time from here on out to um, to get things for your for your student for their concert attire. Um, but specific expectations are listed here in the handbook as well. Um, so some of the things that, that I'm excited about: so Solo and Ensemble Festival um, is February 11th. That is the, the third of the three required performance dates. Um, again, on the band handbook or on the band website. And what that is is students, all students, will go to Northeast High School and will perform individually for a judge. That judge will give them a rating, and that rating um, will determine if they get a medal or not. And it's, it's a great experience, and the students get to be worked with with that professional for about five, ten minutes after they play for them. So it's like a little mini lesson, as well as, as getting to play and perform a solo um, by themselves. So that's a great time. That's a bit, very beneficial time for all the students in the band program to get some individual feedback from a professional on their instrument. I know some of you with kids here, with sixth graders here, are thinking we don't even have instruments yet. How are we going to be playing a solo in front of somebody? And we'll definitely get there together. So we've done it. I've done it many times before, and, and it will be it will be a great experience. Um, for my seventh and eighth grade students, we have the Mid State Honor Band. Um, it's a, a very competitive honor band that's open to all of the mid-state region. And so that will be on December 3rd. Those auditions will be held. And so um, we'll talk more about that in class for students that are interested in that. Um, a much smaller regional band is the Gateway Honor Band. I'm going to highly, highly encourage my 8th grade students and, um, and my 7th grade students to audition for that. A lot of times the students just audition for it, they'll make it. Um, so they, a lot of them get, get nervous about it. I have, um, I've hosted those auditions for the last several years at my previous school, and I intend to host them this year. We're set to host them um, here at Kirkwood Middle School, um, and I do that because I want to make it as easy as possible for my students to audition. That's kind of a selfish reason, but it's worth the work. It's worth the work so that our students here um, can, can have an easier time auditioning. So, um, so that will be coming up in the spring as well. Um, the number one thing, if you wanted to ask me the number one thing that you can do to help your student with their instrument is to get private lessons. If you have the means or the ability to get private lessons for your for your student, um, that that is the really the biggest game changer as far as getting them some individual time. So the the blessing of great class sizes is that we have a lot of students that are engaged in instrumental music. The downside of large class sizes is there's that much less time per individual student. And so with a large band program does come less time per student. And so having private lessons allows students to get some extra help and, um, and on a more regular basis. So, so that's important. Um, now one thing I, I did need to talk about tonight that is kind of a pressing concern of mine um, is, is fundraising. So, and just to be as, as um, hopefully not overly blunt, but, um, but honest with you as possible, I have, I have zero funds right now. Um, I have the, I, in March of this year, um, they asked me for a list and they gave me a, a budget of what I could purchase instruments wise. Um, probably 90% of that has not come in yet um, because of how long it's taking things, the things that are back ordered. Um, 
And and coming up, we have um, we have some registration fees that, like the Mid State Honor Band, that will unfortunately not be an option if we don't get funding within the next couple of weeks through donations. So just to be very very frank, a lot of the opportunities that students will have this year, actually even solo and ensemble. The solo and ensemble event will not be an opportunity that students can participate in unless we get funding through donations in the next couple of weeks. So I say that with some urgency, um, partially because the, the links have been out for, for about a week now, and so far we have had, um, we've had three donations. Um, one was a parent, one was myself, that was the original donation to see if it worked, and then the other one was Miss Boss to make sure that it was still working. So, so that's currently where we are. Um, that, just to be fair, the parent gave a very generous donation, but it's not nearly enough to cover cover everything. So, um, so that is something we really need. There are forums outside. Again, if you're looking for that link on how to donate, I'll send it out again. But um, but without that, we just we won't be able to do a lot of the activities that we have planned this year. Um, as well as, if your student is in seventh and eighth grade and is interested in jazz band this year. Um, that will only be an opportunity if we can get the equipment for a jazz band. So some of that is getting a drum set, and drum sets are expensive. So again, that's that's my number two priority after getting the registration fees for some of these um, some of these events. So again, these are very very important things. Um, I hate to talk about money in one of our first meetings, but but right now normally I have funds built up from previous years and previous fundraisers to pay for some of these start of the year expenses, and I, I just have nothing. I've already spent, I think I said in an email, but I have already spent several hundred dollars of my own money on um, classroom supplies, materials, things, so we could just run class every day um, because I just, I don't have any, anywhere else to get it from, and, uh, and that's kind of where we are. So, so again, please, please donate um, if you can, if you have the means to, uh, because otherwise we will not be able to function as fully as I would like to this year or as fully as your student would benefit from this year. Um, so some of the other, just to continue on, some of the other after-school ensembles that we have um, is coming up next week, I'll put out information for 7th and 8th grade students to audition for Symphonic Band. So Symphonic Band, my goal for that is to kind of be the, the premier performing ensemble of Kirkwood Middle School. That will be the ensemble that I, I have play at the, um, the Veterans Day Assembly and, and play hopefully a concert festival this year. Um, and, and that will be an audition group. So that will be, it will not be a very hard audition, but it will be just making sure students are, are competent in, in reading notes and rhythms and blanks and basic scales. And, and I encourage all seventh and eighth graders that are interested remotely to audition for that, um, because I think it will be a very good experience. And that was something that, that a lot of Rossview students were um, familiar with from last year. So and again, the jazz band, as I mentioned, is something that I would love to do. Um, on the next page, is, is a page of, of what parents can do to help and parent responsibilities to the band. Um, and and I'm, I'm just not gonna read these to you, but, but I always have, I include this this year, and it's not something I had previously, because I'm always having parents say, what can I do to help my kid? Especially parents that have never done music before. They're like, I just don't know what to do to help my child in music. And, and here's a page. Here's a page of it and different things that you can do um, that will help your child be successful in the band set. Um, likewise, the next page, there's um, student responsibilities to the band, um, and those are things that I've gone over with the students already just to help them understand what their expectations are. Um, a resource, if you're ever looking for professionals on the instruments that the students play, um, I included these in here as well. And then, and then practice. I, I'm not a huge fan of practice sheets. I don't know if you've come from schools that do practice sheets or not. But I remember doing, um, I keep saying my previous school, my previous school was Northeast. I, went to, I taught at Northeast Middle School for a long time. But, uh, but at my previous school, Northeast, um, I, I had had them do practice sheets the first year I got there. And at the very end of the year, after grades were already turned in, I asked my eighth graders, I just said, how many of you have consistently lied on your practice sheets the entire year? And these required a parent signature, too. And so, and I had probably at least 80% of the class raised that year. And so practice sheets as a, as a tool for gauging students' practice is, is not a helpful thing. So I try to do that primarily through playing test, but the only thing that can truly enforce practicing on a regular basis is the parents, the people that are at home. 
right? The people that are making that monetary investment in an instrument. And so I encourage you, please ask your student to practice. Now, I don't tell them that they have to take their instrument home every day because I know that that's not needed. I know that most students will not be able to practice every day, but it would be much more beneficial for your student to be able to practice 20 minutes a day for four days of the week than trying to do two hours on one day because of all the, the slow incremental practice and improvement that they would be able to give. So if you're also, if your student's asking, I don't even know how to practice. Okay, one, we cover this stuff in class, but two, there's resources in the handbook, uh, page 14 and 15, that gives outlines of exactly what to practice. Okay, um, so this is an important one. This is the supply list. So, uh, so this is the what you need to get to uh, to be involved in band. And this year, I have less materials to hand out than any other year that I've taught, um, just because we're a new program with 90% of our equipment that hasn't come in yet. Um, so another thing that is very different from from Kirkwood to Rossview. Okay, so Rossview parent from last year. Welcome to Kirkwood. I'm glad you're Kirkwood parents now. But, um, but we, we do use a different company for our rentals that I recommend for our rentals. Okay, you don't have to use them by any means. And if you are already in 7th and 8th grade, I encourage you to continue on with your payment programs because I know um, AMRO does a rent-to-own program. Okay, Music Central does too, which is the company I'm bringing in. But I've been teaching, this is not a Title I school. Okay, Northeast was a Title I school. And so one of the most important things for me in the past and now even um, is, is to make sure that, that I'm not misleading and I'm not saying that anybody that uses AMRO is misleading, but to make sure that I'm, I'm getting the, the best quality equipment, but also for the most reasonable price. And so, so I have found with my own personal, personal looking at different prices that Music Central has much more reasonable rental prices Okay, and so I will use them personally when I'm renting my, my daughter's instrument this year. Um, so if that's not the stamp of approval, I, I don't know what else would be. But they will be the ones that I bring into the school. They'll be the ones that, uh, that I offer as just a resource to rent. They are out of Hopkinsville, so they're not very far away. Um, again, AMRO, I think they'll, they're happy to take repairs at Mary's Music downtown. So that's a very, very helpful thing if you're still working with AMRO. Um, if you're looking at stepping up through AMRO, I encourage you to do so. But that's just not the company I, I use. I know Reese King, he's, I, he's their rep, he's a great guy, but um, that's just not the company I use. So, so anyway, so I'll be using Music Central, but, um, but anyway, enough about, enough about that. Um, as, far as, as far as supplies go, concert clothing is a requirement, three ring binder, um, students need a music stand. Now, sometimes they'll try to like prop stuff up on their cases and they get all these posture issues from practicing at home in weird ways. So, um, so make sure that they have some sort of music stand. And then, um, and then there is a method book that students will use. Now for sixth grade parents, um, don't worry about that yet. We're gonna get to that with the rental process next week. But for seventh and eighth grade parents, if you haven't ordered that already, please go ahead and do so. So that information is right here in the handbook. Um, again, under method book, and it tells you exactly which one. You can do it through, um, through Amazon or through GIA. I sent out some links just the other day that are helpful links to, um, to get that in, those books ordered from. And then as far as, as instruments for class, I have recommended brands. Now, if you come in with an instrument outside of those brands, I'm not going to kick the kid out of the class. I could do anything like that. But I just I put these on here as just more of a... Here's a, here's a safe place to go. Because there are a lot of brands out there that I think, uh, I think a lot of folks are familiar with the, the Wish, right? You see Wish stuff that gets advertised in your social media. And, and we all know that most of the stuff that's produced by Wish is, is knockoff, is, uh, is, not, is not the real stuff, and a lot of it falls apart. Okay, so with a lot of brands that are out there, they, they do the exact same thing. So if you, especially if you find an instrument at Walmart, you don't, you don't want to buy it. So just be very careful about that. Um, if you do want to use a different company outside of the ones that we're recommending, either AMRO or Music Central, just be careful about the quality of instrument that you're getting. That's something that a lot of parents just don't, don't have a grasp on if they haven't been in the music world before, but, but I just want to warn you about that in advance. Okay, so, um, so again, they do need, uh, they need the instrument, yes, but they also need the corresponding supplies. So you can get a great clarinet, 
but it's not going to do anything if you don't have rinse. So you just need to make sure that you follow through with the, the supplies as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or ask. Uh, one thing important for percussionists, I think this is a little bit different than Ross Fewer, those are the points that I'm really trying to touch on, um, is, is the percussion requirements. We do have a specific, yeah, we have a bell kit and a practice pad that's needed, but we also have um, some specific sticks. They don't have to be these exact model sticks, but they need to cover the same concept. So if they're, they're medium soft percut or medium soft marimba mallets, they need a pair of medium soft marimba mallets. Okay, it doesn't have to necessarily be those. Um, those are just some of the ones that I found when I was putting this list together. So, um, so again, those are, those are important things and percussionists will learn a little bit about um, all of the percussion instruments. And so that's why I want to make sure that they have um, everything they need to play, just about everything back there. Okay, um, I'm almost done. Almost done for, for seventh and eighth grade parents. Um, if you have not turned in the signature form, um, please, please do so soon. I'm putting those in power school. Um, and just not to um, but we'll make sure everybody's not confused about it. So I'll put a check mark in the box if it gets turned in, but there's another icon because it's an ungraded assignment. I'm not putting a grade in for turning a piece of paper. Okay, um, but it, that, that marker sometimes looks like the missing marker as well. So just, just know that if there's not a check mark, it hasn't been turned in. If there is a check mark, it has been turned in. And then uh, last thing, last thing, and then I'll hush for a couple minutes while seventh and eighth grade parents I head out. But the uh, parent involvement form, that, this is something new for me this year because ultimately I'm, I'm going to need help. Like I already admitted with the, with the fundraising side of things, I, I need help. There's, there's things I can't do on my own. And so this year I, uh, I priced out if we had a comparable inventory of just the larger instruments in the school building. Just the, just the larger. So I'm not talking about any extra flutes or any extra clarinets or anything like that, but just the larger instruments. If we had a comparable inventory to a school that's been here, like, like Rossview or Northeast, it would be about $141,000 more than the budget that we got for opening the school. So that's a lot of money. I don't expect that kind of money to roll in this year. If somebody wins the lottery, please think about the Kirkwood Middle School Band. Um, we, would, we would love a donation of any kind. But, um, but that is something that as somebody that's starting a band program, I'm starting to look not for right now, not for next year, but for the next 10 years and starting to think about what we're going to need to do to overcome that, that deficit that we have. Because one thing and some of the things I'm trying to work through central office as best I can, our numbers from what I understand as far as our budget for starting this band program, we're not adjusted for inflation from West Creek. So when West Creek opened, so they were in a very different place um, economically um, when West Creek opened. And so if those numbers weren't adjusted, then that's a lot of money that could potentially come in. So again, hoping that that pans out, um, but that's not my expectation either though. So, um, so that, that is an important thing. I'm trying to work through any channel that I can, but the parent involvement form is just, um, just so I can kind of get an inventory of who's able to help so I'm not bombarding all parents all the time with information about opportunities to help. So my big focus this year is forming some parent teams based on your interest um, as far as what you're able to do or willing to do um, in volunteering for the band. And some of the big ones are trying to get corporate donations this year. So that would be a big focus of mine um, to work with those, some of those parent teams that were interested in that. Um, in the future, I would, I've, I've looked into the possibility of starting a band booster program um, and or organization here at the school. And so that's something that, that if it does happen, will happen in a future year because that's kind of a big process. Uh, but, but that's kind of my plan for right now. And so, so this year, expect to be reached out to if you, um, if you included yourself in, in that. But I do ask that at least one parent from each household fill out the form. And again, if you fill out the form and say you're never available, I'm not going to contact you about doing stuff. But just so I just so I know who is who is willing to help from every family. So um, I think I think that is all that I had for seventh and eighth grade specifically. So I'm going to take again. I'm going to try to move as quickly as possible just to be respectful of your time. But I'm going to take about um, three minutes. Three minutes. Drink some water. 
um, catch my breath for a second, then I'm going to get into sixth grade parent information. So if you did come here for seventh and eighth grade, thank you so much for being here. If I left a question unanswered on kind of what my goal or vision is or, or just a question that you have, please feel free to email me. But thank you for being here tonight, coming out on a Friday night. I appreciate that. Um, and I, I hope to see you at our, at our first concert for sure. So I hope you have a good evening, and I'll see sixth grade parents in just a second. Let's go ahead and get going just so we can get done and you can get home and enjoy your Friday evening. Um, I wanted to talk through a bit of um, sixth grade specifics because sixth grade is so different. Um, really from this point on, I will probably only have a sixth grade parent meeting. I won't do a full band parent meeting because we won't be starting a full program any other year, but just sixth grade students. So um, some just specific things about kind of the next couple weeks and what, they're, what they will look like and what we'll be doing is really what I want to go through. So one, I want to talk about what we have done in class, which we have, uh, we've, done, we've done a lot. Um, and we've had students rolling in the entire time, so we're trying to cover and review and go back and recover and review and, and kind of make that a cycle. But we have this week especially, we've learned about all the instrument choices that are available in class. We've learned about um, what instruments um, students in band can play because there's always a couple that come in that's like, this is not a rock band. And so we have to explain that, well, this is not a rock band. This is going to be a slightly different experience. Uh, others will come in and say, you know, well, I want to play, I want, you know, I want to play all these string instruments. And, and this, is not, this is not a string orchestra. You know, I wish we could offer string orchestra. Maybe in the future we will be able to, depending on what Kirkwood High School offers. But, but this is not a string orchestra. It is a, it is a band program. And so, so we're limited to um, woodwind, brass, and percussion instruments. 
Um, just this is kind of our starting point. That's what we covered over the past couple weeks. We've learned some basics in terms of rhythm. We've learned basics um, in terms of um, clapping and, and being able to actually count those rhythms and perform those rhythms. So we have been working already on some of the performance aspects. We've talked a lot about expectations and what I expect of my band students. <laughs> So that has been coming up. Um, but then next week really kicks off all of the, the rest of it. Okay, and, um, and actually this, this night, part of the difficulty of scheduling this night specifically was originally I was contacted that I had scheduled it on top of Open House. And so I'm um, asked if I wanted to move it. And I really didn't particularly want to move it, but did anyway. Um, and I moved it to tonight because I needed it to be before instrument testing, which happens on Monday, as you know. Um, but I need to be far enough away from the start of the year that I can try to get as many parents of students that are joining late in the year to go ahead and start. So my goal next year is to hopefully get most of our recruiting done in May so that we're not having to do this kind of last minute recruiting push and so we can hopefully have a little bit, a little bit more breathing room at the start of the year. So um, but next week we're going to go through instrument testing after school. And so that instrument testing will involve um, myself, will involve my, our assistant band director here at Kirkwood, Ms. Tubbs, and will involve a, a professional that will come in and will, will help us with that. So we'll test on uh, the major woodwind, brass, and percussion instruments. I've been prepping students, um, trying to be as clear as possible with what my expectations are for percussion in class, especially for those students um, involved and in wanting to, to play percussion. But on Monday in class, I'll kind of walk through the exact specifics of what they will be asked to do after school. So again, Monday they'll get it explained, and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday will be the instrument testing after school. So students will be staying for those. If you haven't gotten that permission slip in to me, please make sure you get it in. They cannot stay without that permission slip. So I'll try to get some done in class that, get, um, that, don't, that don't come in with it, but I really need them to stay after school for that um, for that time just because of how how individual based it is we really need that specific time with the, with the individual student so anyway so um, so over the course of those three days we'll get um, ratings for each student for each instrument um, and then I'll take some time on Wednesday night and come up with a recommendation for each student now um, I'm gonna be just a little more firm than I probably have been in the past uh, that, that ultimately, if you don't, um, if your student's kind of in a place of, they, they look at the recommendation of what instrument I gave them, which I, I will ask them what they want to play and try to take that into account as best I can, but if they look at that and just like, I'd rather quit band than play this instrument, then, then yeah, email me and let's have a conversation about where we can go from there, okay? I, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna just let it be a free for all. I explained it to the students like this. If a, if a football coach, um, came in for spring training, and uh, I'm talking about something I don't know a ton about, so you may make fun of me in your head if I, I say something that doesn't make sense. But if a, if a football coach came in, everybody came in and wanted to be the kicker for the year. And the coach said, okay, well, everybody, I'm just going to let you all be the kicker. You would say that was a bad football coach. And likewise, if the band director says, well, everybody can play saxophone, or everybody can be a percussionist, that's a bad band director. So we do have to have uh, proper instrumentation. We have to have a balanced instrumentation to have a full band program. It is, it is a larger program than just the one student. And so again, trying to take all these things into account with those recommendations is my goal. So again, if, if your student is so unsatisfied with the recommendation, even after their choice and their ability on the different instruments in the testing rooms, has been taken into account, please contact me so we can get them placed in a section that won't throw off the balance of the ensemble too much. So I, I really need you to contact me for that. The one section, I've been very clear about this in class, the one section that I cannot, no matter what, take any more students in than the ones that I give recommendations for is percussion. Okay, so I, I know that's a big one. That's always the one that students want to play and they want to come in. I want to play the drums, Mr. Well, well it's, it's percussion. That includes a lot more, and we covered that specifically in class today. But percussion is the one that I, I physically don't have the instruments for them to play in class. And I hear parents all the time kind of say, well, I'll, you know, I'll buy them the instruments. Well, the percussionists play on, over the course of their time in the back of the room, they'll play on over $30,000 worth of equipment. And so unless you're going to buy a whole other $30,000 worth of equipment for that student that's going to stay in the band room, which that's not even an option, uh, that's just, that's not something that we can do. So, um, so percussion is a hard and fast limit to what the recommendations are. 
um, the other instruments, we can have that conversation. But, but I still would ask that you consider very strongly that recommendation. So if, again, they want to play something else that besides what they've been recommended, please contact me, and, and we'll talk, and we can go through there. Um, but those will be coming out Thursday during the school day. So what will happen Thursday night is uh, we will have our, our rental night. So the rental night does not necessarily involve you having to come to the school. So um, there is a link in your, in your band handbook where you could actually already go and rent an instrument if you wanted to through Music Central. If you don't want to use Music Central, if you want to shop around and find somewhere else, then by all means do that. But please, please, please take my warning from earlier about brands very seriously because I've had students that start with instruments that they, they don't take that warning seriously. They start with instruments that fall apart on week two, and that's such a discouraging thing for their music education. So I'm trying to set your student for set your student up for success over the course of the year by making my recommendations now. So, so I would ask, you know, I have experience in this, I've been doing this for a while now, and I've just seen these things play out when, when parents don't follow those recommendations. So, so please be careful about that. But that rental night would be Thursday. Of, of this coming week. That would be, I believe, from five to seven here in the in the library. I believe Miss Stoll is out here somewhere. Maybe, yeah, she's at the back over there. So she's our librarian, our media specialist. And so she will be, um, she will be here and she will, uh, well, I don't know if she'll be here actually. Um, I'll be here um, with some of the Music Central reps and we'll be in her space. So we'll make sure to take good care of it. But, um, but that will be next Thursday. So we'll be open for that. If Again, if you want to call up, if you don't have the time to come in on Wednesday, if you want to go online, but it is important that that take place on Thursday so that your student can start with their instrument on the same day as all the other students. So please make sure that you're that you're on that for that day. Um, the following, not the weekend right after that Thursday, but the following weekend, I think September 3rd, we do have a beginning band camp. Okay, I, I named it Beginning Band Camp because I thought that sounded fun, but I think I had a lot of parents that were scared by it because they went back to their marching band days and started thinking about what they're doing with marching band. That's not what it's about. Okay, it's not marching band. It's not anything like that. We'll be inside. We'll probably be sitting down, okay, and it will be in different rooms here at Kirkwood. Um, so it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, we are partnering. Um, well, my intention is to partner with Rossview Middle School. They'll be having students come in and they'll help get some of the, um, the different artists that will come in and be working with individual student groups. So the goal is that that be a day where students can get some extra help outside of the school week from a professional on that specific instrument so, um, so they can get a little bit of light instrument instruction. Now, if you're gonna be gone for Labor Day weekend, you know, there's always a up and down with dates. And if you're gonna be gone for that weekend, that's fine. It's an optional weekend activity. But just know that it's a, it's a good, beneficial activity for your students to come in and get some extra help. So my intention is to have um, some additional starter days coming up as well, where students have the opportunity to stay after school in light instrument groups. Like, I know one day we're going to have flutes stay one day after school, after we picked instruments, and say, flutes stay until 4 o'clock with Miss Tubbs. Okay, and work with Miss Tubbs and, and work with her, because that's, that's great. She has, you know, she has her degree. Um, Yes, in music education, but also in performing flute. So we want to make sure that we're utilizing all these all these things. And so, you know, some days the brass players may be working with me um, and until four and, and getting some of that extra help in like instrument groups. So again, that would be um, more concentrated probably in the next month than any other time. We won't be doing that throughout the entire year, um, but that will be kind of getting students up off the ground to make sure that they feel some success, especially at the beginning. Uh, that's when that will take place. So one quick note on our instrument testing. Um, so just to kind of orient you to where we are. So this is the theater. The band room is right on the other side of that hallway that's outside the theater. And then out there is Kirkwood High School and the bus parking lot. So it is in that bus parking lot that we will have pickup for the instrument testing days. I said it in the, uh, in the permission slip and in some of the other communications, but just wanna make sure that you're aware that is the opposite side from car riders and also not the front of the school building. So we're just gonna release out there. Okay, it should be the area getting the least traffic at that time of day at four o'clock. Um, and just to clarify, I had some, uh, some parents come at open house and be like, okay, I'm gonna drop my kid off at four. Okay, um, that's not when you drop them off, it's when you pick them up. So they're gonna stay after school as long as they turn into permission slip and then, uh, and then they'll do their testing and go on. So they'll get their formal recommendations on Thursday and we'll go from there. So 
that is what I have for you. So I'll be around for questions if you have them. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy if you need to take off and you want to shoot me an email, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can with that. Um, as far as me and email, if you email me and I don't get back to you within 48 hours, I've probably let the email get too far down. So please just forward it to me again. I, I would not be offended by that. Okay, I'm happy to get back to you, but if it gets too far down, it may just be gone. Sometimes you get, you know, 40 to 50 emails during the day, and it just, it works its way down. And if it gets marked as red, you know, it's not coming back. So, um, so if you need anything, let me know. If you have questions, please let me know. Please come talk to me, or please shoot me an email. But thank you for coming out tonight on a Friday night. Um, please consider donating to the band, and, um, and I hope you have a, a safe evening. Thank you.